analogize heat to the idea of your emotional body and the fact that something could be agitating your emotional body and making you feel irritated and cranky and you don't realize that it's energy you think that it's personal and you attribute the reason why you're upset to the personal things happening in your own life not realizing that pretty much everybody's going through it at the same time and right now we are in one of those periods where everybody's energy is cranked way up yeah. and there's a lot of stress well I was just about to say uh, <laughs> is Kerrang! it's the night before we're talking to David Wilcock at the moment uh, he's a researcher and lecturer uh, and filmmaker and and what I was going to say to you is I have noticed you know in the United Kingdom at the moment a lot of people are getting stressed obviously the credit crunch uh, but not just that it kind of people being more irrational uh, and being you know acting quite strange and also a lot of people getting into kind of more esoteric stuff and and you know getting involved in more weird uh you know things like uh, uh you know in terms of what they're interested in are you saying that this is something that's happened happening across the world because of these changes in the universe yes it is that's what i that is exactly what i'm saying and one of the most fascinating discoveries goes back to the practitioners of transcendental meditation where they found that if they had a gathering of 7,000 people and those people meditated for a whole week together, that the overall worldwide amount of terrorist activity, war, uh, violent crime, car accidents, uh, all of those things substantially decreased. In fact, in one gathering, they decreased worldwide by 72%. So here, this is where it gets fascinating because... Although some of these things could be caused by sunspots or other astrological factors, various planetary movements, other, other aspects of it is that we can control the field ourselves. And when people calm themselves down as groups, then that has a field effect that will calm other people down. We have no a wonderful amount of data to show that. Yeah. So, so, David, in your research, what you're saying is, and I don't know how many people listening to us will have heard of this, but every now and then bunch of hippy dippies will bring us up or whatever and say listen we're all just going to sit down and we're going to meditate on love we're going to think nice things we're going to do it for a couple of hours it's going to happen across the world and like i said i don't know how many people listening to the show are aware that this happens but sometimes big groups of people thousands of people will all pick a time specifically to meditate and be nice are you saying that does genuinely work oh yeah you have to understand there's been over 22 different scientific studies of meditation gatherings which usually are done on the level of the city that the meditation gathering happens in. And in one of the most dramatic examples, uh, that, you know, the people that did this were aware that this would reduce uh, crime and terrorist activity. There was a gathering in Lebanon during the Israel-Lebanon war in the early 80s. And there was gunfire and explosions going on outside the doors of the building where people were having the meditation gathering. And they were actually looking at each other going, well, should we, like, run? Should we evacuate? Because this war is literally right outside the doors of the building. And we could all be blown up in here, or somebody could come in and mow us all down with a machine gun. And they basically decided they were going to trust the, the science and trust that if they did this meditation thing, that there would be this wave of energy that would affect people's minds. You obviously can't see the energy, but you're going to feel something. And it will naturally reduce hostility. So they actually decided not to run. They all meditated together. And sure enough, by the time they got done meditating, it was dead quiet outside. And all the hostility had left the area. And at 22 different times, the cities where they did these meditation gatherings had substantial decreases in crime, violence, fatalities, terrorism, all that stuff. This is incredible. I mean, like I say, I've, I've hung out with people who believe this kind of stuff. I've never heard someone like yourself who's done all this research uh, to, you know, come along and back it up. That's quite insane. Uh, well, let me put my tinfoil hat on for a moment and just suggest the idea that there might be power groups that know that this stuff really works and they have made a very good effort of not ever getting anybody to talk about it because they don't want it to be used against them. I'm thinking that you're kind of looking at the brain as being something that receives and transmits thoughts like a, a radio set would, you know? Like, do you know what I mean? Rather than... That's exactly right. So is, so is that actually... Do you, I mean, can I receive thoughts? Can you receive thoughts and transmit them? Is that what you're telling us? Yeah, I'm saying we're doing that all the time. Um, 
The problem is that we have, well, it's not a problem, it's actually a blessing. The blessing is, is that nature has given us a biasing mechanism that avoids us from going schizophrenic. And that biasing mechanism is that when thoughts float in, we interpret them as personal. But there are, there are multiple studies that have been done that show that if you live next door to someone, that the rate at which you breathe, the rate at which your heart rate is pumping, the rate at which the electrical activity is happening on your skin, all of these physiological factors synchronize with the body of the person who lives next door to you. Even if you never talk to the guy that you live next door to, which I know in London probably happens all the time, and it sure does here in L.A. So um, this is not just pseudoscience. This is stuff that's been studied, and this is stuff that's been laboratory documented. There's a guy named Dr. William Broad who has shown that you can have somebody in a room and have a secret camera aimed at them, and they don't even realize it, and you wire up their skin for how much electrical activity they have. And when you have someone stare at them in a monitor uh, in another room, then that person's electrical activity that's being stared at goes way, way up, and they have no idea they're being stared at. They don't feel anything, they don't notice anything, but their body does. So a lot of times, animals seem to be much more attuned to this stuff than we are. That's why when you're getting ready to have an earthquake or something, all the animals flee the area. And we don't feel anything, and then we get hit, but the animals seem to know something's coming. So have, all, we, have we been talked out of this ability? That's the whole. That's the point. Yeah, is that we have this ego, and the ego will get little nudges and little signals, and we just say, "Oh, that doesn't mean anything." We've just gotten used to thinking it doesn't mean anything, so it's subtle. The problem is, this, these kinds of messages never really hit you over the head. You have to be willing to pay attention to something that could flitter in and out of your mind very quickly. The problem is, most people are in so much stress that they're obsessing over all these details in their mind all the time. Their mind isn't clear. So all these like Zen Buddhists and Taoist monks and everybody are always telling you to meditate and clear your mind. The reason why is that the more that you clear out the repetitive, obsessive thoughts that you would naturally have, the more you're opening yourself to the purity of the field, which is ultimately a loving consciousness. It's a joyful, expansive, radiant 